intro music a little bit intro jamming how you doing this is tony from six string corner and i'm glad to hear from all of you thank you for showing up if you're on the live feed oh wait i gotta get fix my camera here real quick all right in fact i'm gonna switch my cameras give me one second here Let's switch cameras and uh yes we are going to see what we can do about helping playing with a pick oh my gosh Yes, that is a comment. There we go. New camera. All right. Yay. So um, how you doing? Um, we're going to show you how to use a pick. We're going to get a little bit into detail on this lesson. Um, I am going to have much more in the future on picking as well. Um, I think that this has been a big hot topic that I have heard from many people that I know, uh, uh, not just my students, but just reading forums and uh, just hanging out out there, um, hearing how people are uh, are dealing with uh, playing um, uh, with a pick, uh, it's been a tough trouble for some tough thing for some people. And I'm going to address that a little bit. Uh, we're going to go through this kind of quickly. So I'm just going to sort of give you some pointers, some tips, uh, tips and tricks and how to effectively use the pick for playing not only just single notes, um, but also for strumming too. It comes into play both ways and how we hold the pick. Um, now if you're not able to, um, is, a uh, uh I'm sorry, N2 Shagin. I don't know who your, what your first name is, but I do see you. Thank you very much for your uh, for your comment there. Um, I, hopefully, I didn't screw up that name. I do apologize. Um, but um, anyway, uh, showing how to use a pick. Now, if you don't use a pick, if you do, there are plenty of 
players out there, actually professionals who do really well um, playing without a pick. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, actually Lindsey Buckingham from uh, Fleetwood Mac does wonderful with that. Uh, Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits. Uh, so there are a lot of players who can get by really, really well without using a pick. So a pick isn't necessary, isn't a necessity to playing guitar. It's not like the says all be all to, and when I say guitar, I mean electric, I mean rock, you know, uh, pop, country, whatever. Um, but um, it doesn't say it says all end all. Um, so if if you're doing the fingers, you can do really well with that. But um, using a pick just expands your palette a little bit. And I think that that's what I want to address here really quick is uh, showing you, we're gonna start with the basics here today. There is really, honestly, a lot you can cover on just picking the picking the strings. I can't tell you how, I mean, I could be here for hours probably showing you all this stuff, I'm not gonna do that. But um, today what I'm gonna do, if since this is the beginning, let's start with, um, hi Christy, okay, how you doing? All right, so I just wanna be able to uh, show you just the basics on how to just simply like hold the pick, um, how to put the pick across the strings, um, a couple of little tips and tricks that we'll use here. Um, if this is something you want to hear more of, I can continue this and we can go into more detail on some maybe specific exercises that you can do to work with the, with the pick. I'll try and cover at least one today. Um, but, um, and then there's all different styles of picking out there. There's hybrid picking, there's alternate picking, there's sweet picking, there's all kinds of things out there. I will have to confess I'm not like the best at sweet picking, but um, you know, alternate picking, uh, a lot of stuff we do with legato. It's not necessarily directly with picking, but picking is involved with legato style. I mean, these may be foreign terms to many of you, so <laughs> I do apologize for that. So um, but I want to get you a little bit on just the basics on how to get through using a pick while you're playing guitar, while you're picking individual notes, and while you're strumming. Um, so um, the first thing that I always tell people is that we, I want to make sure that your fingers are warmed up. So whenever you do um, any sort of practice, any sort of routine, you want to get your fingers warmed up. And, you know, I was just doing a little bit of blues jam right there to a backing track that I found on YouTube. Um, but you know, getting my fingers in shape um, so that I can play you know, better, more efficiently. It's just like if you're in exercise, you want to be able to, um, to uh, you know, to get your fingers in shape and get them warmed up and get them going. So um, I have a uh, guitar finger gymnastics, which is in the description below, regardless whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, you will see that. Um, and uh, go ahead and grab that at some point when you can. Um, it's a, just a free set of videos that have a different Bunch of, a whole bunch of different routines and exercises and whatnot that will help uh, your fingers do what you want them to do. There's some strength, some coordination, some dexterity that will definitely um, uh, definitely help you with that. But we're going to address picking today. All right, so let's get started. Um, also, I want to also welcome those of you who may be coming in um, You know, after this uh, broadcast. This is being done live today, uh, but I'm sure many of you are going to watch this afterwards, so do welcome you as well. Um, so let's get started all right all right so here's here's the culprit the culprit right here this is the peak um although i've heard it uh, i believe my friends over the pond call it a plectrum so i had to figure that one out at one point um that's called a plectrum so if you are from overseas this is a plectrum but we call it here a pick in um where i'm where i come from where i come from on these parts so um there are different kinds of picks, so let's give a quick dissertation on what kind of picks should you be using, depending on your skill level and depending on what you want to play. Um, I use a, uh, a, there's different brands out there. I'm just going to tell you what I use. I use what's called a Tortex. I don't know if you can even see that. Uh, Dunlop, it's a little worn because I've been using it. But uh, Dunlop Tortex, and it's, it's a, um, what is that, a 0.88 millimeter. Now, that's just a specified thickness that I like to use on the guitar because I'm an electric, because um, I like it a little bit thicker, a little resistance, so that when I'm, when I'm playing certain leads and whatnot, I want to, yeah, it just gives me a little more control with that. It's not, it's not the, the, the pick isn't floppy in my hands. Um, you might, a, a great pick that I actually re do recommend people to start off with too, which is what I started off with years and years ago, is the Fender Mediums. Fenders are really good. Fender Medium picks are good. Um, you could use Fender Lights. Now, Lights are a thinner pick. So depending on what brand you get, what, what you use, um, a thinner pick is, in my opinion, great for like strumming on the acoustic. I have an acoustic guitar um, that uh, has a thinner 
uh, pick here. Now this is still the same brand, but it's got a little less, it's got a little uh, more uh, flex to it than this one here. And I'm sure you probably can't tell on the camera, but um, I use the uh, the thinner picks if I want to use more strumming. And I, you know, the acoustic guitar, I tend to want to do that. I want to use the pick, uh, the thinner picks uh, on strumming. Now, how thin should you go? Well, it's going to be a matter of preference. Um, Again, like I say, the, the Fender Lights, there's are there are a good brand. What's also really good, uh, a lot of these brands, I know Tortex and I think Fender does, and um, uh, I'm sorry, Dunlop and whatnot, do sell variety packs. So if you're still early on in this trying to figure it out, um, I think a variety pack is really good. They give you all kinds of different types of picks. It's for a few bucks. It's not very expensive, but it's worth the investment so that you can try different kinds. Uh, so if you're still early in on this and you're trying to figure out what you want to use, um, I would go and get a variety pack. Um, I, again, I, like I said, I use Dunlop, uh, Tortex, but it can be any brand that has a variety pack. You can find them on Amazon. Guitar Center's got our, their website, Musician's Friend. I like Sweetwater. Um, you, you can go on any one of those sites, and they will have variety packs. Just look for guitar pick variety packs. Order that uh, if you don't have it already, and there's all different kinds in there, and you probably won't use them all. That's the thing. But it's a great testing ground for you. And, and if you have electric and acoustic, um, it's also, you, you may find that you like, like I do, different picks for different guitars. Like I said, I like the thicker picks for the electric because of my style of playing. I like to go with the slightly thin. I don't like it too thin, but I like it a little bit thinner on the acoustic. I like to have a little more uh, flexibility because when I'm doing my strums. So, um, so you may find that too if you've got different kinds of guitars. I would just, I would highly suggest that you get a variety pack. Um, and, and, you know, again, order online or go to your nearest guitar center or whatever music store and Aja, they probably have them or you can at least try them. Okay. That's another good thing too. If you walk in the music store with your mask on and uh, try, um, try a few different picks, but grab a couple of guitars or bring your own and, and see what feels good. What feels good on you? What feels good on your, on your fingers? So um, that's the first step there on guitar. Uh, I'm using picks and this is, like I said, I'm starting at the very beginning and we're going to work our way up today. And then we're probably going to continue on this in a future lesson, if that's something you guys want to hear. Um, so, so after we find the right pick that we want to use, or maybe we got to still determine that, what we want to do is let's begin with how to hold the pick. All right. Now I've seen all different kinds of ways of how people hold picks. So I'm going to give you a quick dissertation on how I do it and how most players do it. Um, and I'm going to see another camera here. So I'm going to get a little bit closer. Uh, get a closer view. All right. So, um, <clears throat> So the way I hold a guitar pick, and let's start with that first, regardless of whether I'm playing um, acoustic or electric, is um, first thing we want to do is we want to take our thumb. You, know, you see how you got like a, the picks like a triangle like that, right? So if you hold it downward, you take your thumb and you put it across the, the pick just like this, okay? Now I like having it so maybe, uh, I don't know, roughly, what is that? Maybe maybe a third of the pick there, quarter of the pick is, is showing on the bottom. And your thumb completely covers the whole rest of that pick. So we don't, you don't want it here. Hold it like this. Um, and probably not over overhold it too. That's going to be really awkward. But definitely not this way. Uh, the reason you want to grab as much of that pick, uh, especially for those of you who've played acoustic and have uh, had the pick drop out of your hands and fall into the sound hole. <laughs> Isn't that fun, right? Um, so you want to be able to hold on to the pick much like this. Now, uh, back to really quick on those variety pack uh, picks. You may find, because there's some picks that have the top where it's 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 a strong grip. You can have a better grip on the picks. Those are really, really super nice. I'm actually considering maybe switching those at some point. But um, that, those will help uh, you also hold on to that pick better. So if you're strumming, you're picking, you're less likely to, to drop it, okay? But we want to have a good good uh, holding of the pick so that uh, obviously we don't drop it. And also later, we can have... Um, uh, we have another, we, you know, we can just pick the strings better um, when we hold the pick correctly, okay? So the thumb goes across like this, all right? And on the other side, okay, switch the camera around. So on the other side, um, we, we hold the pick like this, and we bring our pointer finger down like this, all right? Now, if you notice, I'm not holding my pointer finger flat, so it's sort of on the side, on the thumb, thumb side of that finger, pointer finger right here. He's holding it down so that you can see the nail. 
All right. You can see my full nail there. Um, I'm not telling you too far in and I, you, I'm not holding it straight out like that. Now I've seen people also, and I've even seen book show holding a pick like this. I would strongly suggest against that. Um, that limits you by what you can do. Um, I think that that's just not a good idea. So what you want to do is you want to be able to, to hold the, hold a pick like this, uh, across like that with your, with your finger, the side of your pointer finger, and then your thumb across. And if you notice also, um, my, my, uh, my, my finger is, I do have the knuckle bent, whatnot. It, it's going to be more of a net. It'll feel more natural if you understand that part. And then the thumb, you know, at the moment is straight, but we're going to show, I'm going to show you something else you're going to need to do with the thumb once we get down. Uh, onto the guitar. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit about that. So this is basically how I like to hold the pick, and it works for me. Um, I've noticed that a lot of a lot of players do hold it this way. This tends to be the more popular way. There may be other ways that work really well to for people. You might be one of them where this might be a great, um, uh, you know, this may be perfect way to hold it, and maybe it is. I don't know. Um, I can just tell you that this works for me. And um, so that some of the tech, couple of techniques that I'm going to show you going over the strings, holding it this way really lends itself uh, to really help make those those strings and those notes sound really, really well. OK, now, one other thing about this before we get moving is when we hold the pick like this, you know, we got three other fingers, right? At least most of us do. Uh, hopefully we do. If you don't. Well, you know, it, it still applies. The remaining fingers. Um, what you want to do, here, wait, uh, let, me, let me begin this way. What you don't want to do is when you hold a pick like this is to grab your hand. And I see this a lot where your, your hands are in like this. Um, here's a big reason why I don't like this, especially with beginners and specifically beginners, but I think with anybody, I mean, if you have your hand in here, guess what's getting in the way that it's getting in the way of the other strings and you're kind of brushing them on top. It does interfere with your picking motion at some point, but also can lend itself to string noise, uh, hitting unwanted strings. You just don't want that to happen. That's just not a good idea. So what I uh, like to do is I have the fingers out, but the fingers are out and relaxed. You don't want to just tight, you know, tighten them up like that and being really tense. That, that actually kind of defeats the purpose too. When I'm picking, I have just like that. Fingers are relaxed, but they tend to be out. I might have them curled a slight bit, but I, I'm not bunching them in. So you don't want to be doing this. If you're doing it, stop is right now and bring them out. Okay. Cause that's what you're going to want to do. And, um, so that, so just keep them relaxed like that. And then, like I said, hold the pick like so. All right. Now I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to stick with this close up camera here real quick. So I think this will, this will be really good for you guys. So um, now, um, now I'm going to use this on the electric. Um, you know what? I'll grab, I got my 12 string out. It's the same as this acoustic. I'm going to do both guitars so you guys can see how to hold the pick um, on the guitar relative, you know, how we want to hold the pick or place our hand. I'm sorry, how we want to place our hand uh, when, we, when we're either picking individual notes or when we're strumming. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, I'll bring the 12 string because that's what's out. My six strings packed up, so I don't want to waste your time here. So uh, I'll show you that in just a second. So let's start with the electric first. Okay, so um, this is going to be true for the acoustic too. But um, so those of you who don't know your guitar parts, I'm going to introduce you a little bit. This is a quick 20 second introduction here. This is the bridge. Okay, every guitar, acoustics and electric, have a bridge. This whole section right here, where the strings either come through from underneath or they'll come through from the side. Okay, either way, this is the bridge. And then where the bridge strings go over is called the saddles. All right, think of when you straddle a saddle on a horse, right? So the strings are straddling over this part of this. It's called the saddle. And beyond that, that's when the string is then open and free. So um, these are the saddles and then and then the whole bridge. This is kind of important terminology that I'm going to get into in just a second. But make sure that you you understand what the bridge and what the saddle is. I'll, I'll go back to the acoustic in a little bit too and show you the same thing. All right. So now how um, when we position our hand for picking single notes and how we position our hand for doing strumming are two different things or two different schools of thought, if you will, uh, at least in my book. All right. Um, let me clean my uh, sound up a little bit here because I just want to use a clean sound. There we go. All right. So um, when I put, when I'm picking on single notes, right, I'm not playing chord. 
-hmm. I'm not doing chords. I'm just playing like single note. It doesn't really matter when I'm playing in my left hand. I'm just playing single notes, okay? So what we want to do, what I like to do when we're playing single note, uh, and this goes for soloing. I do this for all my soloing. But uh, anytime we're doing single note lines, I should say most of the time. There's always exceptions to every rule. But most of the time, we want to have the heel of our hand and this part of our hand right here sitting on top of the bridge. We like it lightly anchored to the bridge, all right? Really super important because it gives you a lot of control on how to pick these notes, especially if you're really new and this is really new to you. Um, you want to be sure that you have your hand to the bridge when you're picking single notes. And a lot of times with chords too. I mean, it, 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 you know, chords aren't excluded from this idea. But just for the sake of uh, discussing this a little bit, anytime we're doing, we're picking single notes, you know, if I'm playing a solo, you'll notice that the, the heel of my hand here is sitting behind the saddle and it's generally on the top part of this bridge so the top half so it's going to sit depending on which string i'm using and i'm and my hand is usually sort of flat so it's really this whole section of my hand right here right around here so is you're generally sitting right over it and if you see the the how my uh let's see if i get a good angle here my hand and is is Fairly, I wouldn't say it's parallel to the neck. To, I'm sorry, to the body of the guitar, but it's pretty close. And the reason I want that to do that is when I'm actually picking my notes, I'm going to be using a left hand, left to right motion with my wrist, or when I'm strumming, left to right motion with the arm and the wrist. Okay, so it's kind of like this. So I'm not having it twisted like this, and I'm not, you know, in all kinds of crazy angles like that. But I'm, I'm like this, right? Like if you can. Yeah get that angle right there so that's about how i'm holding the hand it's somewhat almost let me get from a different angle it's somewhat parallel to the to the body of the guitar pretty close not exact but it's pretty pretty darn going close the other thing is when you're playing and this goes for strumming too and i'll, I'll show this in the acoustic really quick too later in, in just a second but um how your arm angle comes in matters uh, a lot on your picking okay so notice we haven't really even gotten to actually strike at a, str at a string yet and you got all these are these are things that are really important that you got to know before you actually even play your note all right the other thing too is to make sure that you got a pretty good arm angle coming in now there are different sizes of the guitars or big body guitars or small body guitars or flying v's there's all kinds of guitars so these things are going to vary a little bit based on the size of the of the body of the guitar, whether it's a big old acoustic, you know, these big jumbo things or a little, uh, you know, flying V, if some of you guys still use those things. Um, those are hard to play when you're sitting down. Uh, anyway, that's a whole other story. I don't mean to digress. But you want to come in at a really good angle like this, all right? And generally speaking, and this is just generally generalities because everybody's arm size is a little bit different and guitar size is different. But in general, what you want to do is you want to be able to come in at a roughly, roughly a 45 degree angle, like from up from this corner of the guitar is where your arm should sit. Okay. Now it's going to sit a little different for the acoustic and maybe out a little bit. Uh, your arms might be a little shorter, might be a little longer. So you'd have to adjust it a little bit, but I usually have like this part of my arm. You can kind of even see the indentations right here. That's kind of where I'm sitting. My arm is kind of resting on the top corner right here. And, and and that's that's where I want to rest it and kind of anchor my my arm when I'm when I'm picking individual notes. Now with strumming, I'm going to have my arm off, but I'm still going to have the same angle. Okay, we'll get to that in just a second. The strum, we're not going. I'm not ignoring strumming. I want to get to that in a sec. But the, the angle is still the same regardless, because you don't want to be picking from this angle here. This is really this is really going to mess you up. And you know you don't want to be up here. You don't want to have your arm way down like over like this and you're picking way out here, you know, all these kind of crazy ways. It's about finding the good angle and anchoring and kind of resting your arm on the, the corner and somewhat the front of the guitar, depending on, like I said, the guitar and your arm. And that's how you want to hold it. All right. You want to have your arm coming at an angle. All right. Just like this, because that's going to matter when we actually get to the actual picking part of individual notes. All right, so that's something to be be careful. So you notice already, I've been on for 20, what, 26 minutes here. Well, after the blues thing, 20 minutes here, and we haven't even picked a note. We haven't even picked a note because these things are, are things you're gonna, you gotta make sure that you're doing right before you ever even pick the note. Okay, if you don't get this stuff right, guess what? It's not gonna sound good. Okay, or you're gonna struggle, or you're not gonna pick right. You're gonna, you're just gonna, 
it's just things aren't going to aren't going to really work really well for you. All right. So so these are these are things to pay attention to before you even pick a note. OK, so really quick. One minute review. All right. We want to make sure that we're holding the pick correctly. We want to relax these remaining fingers or whatever remaining fingers you have. All right. You want to relax that. OK, you want to uh, if you're going to pick individual notes. OK, you want to make sure that you want to try to to uh, rest the heel of your hand right here behind the saddles. And notice, that, too, when I'm going to get out, the, the, the hand does angle up a bit. And why? Because I don't want the hands to unless I need it, unless I, it's intentional. I don't want the hand to strike the strings. OK, so I raise it up just a little bit. But the heel of the hand, the this part here is resting on the bridge behind here when I'm picking individual notes. OK, and it's going to vary depending on what strings I'm going to pick. All right. And that your hand, your arm, your hand and whatnot are coming in at a decent angle. Okay. All right. Now got a couple more things here. I will get to the acoustic in just a second and kind of give you a little uh, addendum to how you would do this on the acoustic. But um, so now when we want to pick an individual note, all right, uh, we'll work on this string here. This is your, this is the first string right here. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna we're just gonna work with the first string because just for today, okay? Now <clears throat> picking, um, I've seen it done different ways. So I'm not saying that my way is the only way and the only way that's right. Um, I personally um, would much prefer pick my notes using my wrist. And a lot of the really good players out there. I wouldn't say all of them. Some good ones don't do this, but <clears throat> the ones that I like what listening to and watching and whatnot um, <clears throat> will use more. We're going to are going to use the wrist. You want to be able to use this wrist here with your picking motion and not not your arm when you're picking individual notes. Strumming, we got a different. I got a different thing for the strumming. When we're just doing individual notes, we don't want to be moving moving the hand around and doing all this stuff. Um, it's just unnecessary motion. You want to be as economical as possible. The less movement you have on your arm, on your hand, all these muscles and ligaments, the much more fluid and efficient you're going to be on your playing. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. You want to be able to be as economical as possible when you are playing. It's seriously, it's the less you have to do, the easier it gets. All right. We all want to overcomplicate things and just do too much. It, it really comes down to the simpler, the better. So what we want to do here, and I'm just, I'm not even going to notice, I'm not even using my left hand for this entire lesson. I'm except maybe on the acoustic, I'll do a little bit. So we ain't even doing anything with the left hand right here right now. So <clears throat> what we want to do on the string is we want to just literally use our wrist in a left, right motion. All right, to pick that string, right? Now you notice I'm using my wrist. I have my hand anchored to that bridge. All right, I'm not moving my arm. Arm is fairly steady. I'm coming at the proper angle. You can see how I'm doing that. I'm just using a left, left, right motion. That's what we're doing right there. We're going a left, right motion, up and down up and down, up and down, up and down, just like that. Okay. And I am anchored. Now I will tell you that maybe, you know, there's part of my hand here that is going over the top of these strings here that I'm not using. That's okay. In fact, if anything, especially if you got distortion on, it helps mute some of those strings because if you got a gain of distortion, the pickups are going to pick up a lot of string noise. You can get rid of that. So it's okay if I'm not using those strings to have part of my hand resting on the top strings if I'm picking up here. All right. That's totally, that's to me, that, at least the, my, the way I do it, that's totally fine. All right. So we want to go left to right motion with our wrist over those strings. Okay. And that's how we want to pick individual notes. So when I'm playing a lead, I know I said I wouldn't use my left hand. Well, you can't see my left hand. That's not what, that's not the focus, the right hand. See, I'm doing that. So I'm playing all my leads just based on that. If I'm just going to play a single note, something really simple. It doesn't matter whether you're playing a fancy lead or just playing a melody. You're gonna, I'm, I'm going to tend to have my hand on, see, on the, on the bridge. It gives you a lot more control over what strings you're going to pick. Okay, a lot more control. All right. So that's just how I like to do it. That's what works for me. 
Um, and I've seen most players that I've seen ha ha do it this way. So um, it's what I would suggest you start with. As you progress, as you get better, as you grow, you you may adopt something slightly different. And if it works for you, hey, man, God bless you. But this is just how I how I do it here with uh, on my hand, okay, with the picking. All right, now I've done all that, but before I go to the acoustic. There's one more thing that's really super important. It's, it may be the more most important thing <laughs> on all of this. I mean, all of this stuff is important, right? Everything here is important. But um, what I'm going to show you here is the is is the pick angle on how you strike the string. This is something that gets often overlooked, and I think this might this some oftentimes, at least what I've seen with my own students. Um, let me get away from that. Yeah, there we go. Is um, what I've often seen is how we're striking the pick to the string. Um, if we're striking this wrong, huh, you, you could have potential problems, okay? And how well it sounds, it may sound really clunk, clunky and you, you, you can't move the, you can't get fast enough to the other strings or what have you, or whatever it may be. So here's what I'm gonna devote the next part of this for the picking part. And this is gonna be true on the acoustic too. All right, so this 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 is really super important. So pay attention here, folks. All right, so how we do how we strike the pick on the string. Now I'm gonna not hold it the right way here so you can see the pick. I just want to demonstrate how we want that pick to go across and how we don't want it to go across. And I'll just use this this string here. All right, hopefully you can see that. There we go. All right. So what I don't want to do, all right, this is what I this is a don't. The tip, the flat part of the pick with the tip right here, going directly. Get, let me get even closer here if I can if I can get this. Directly. Mm. Apologize for the dust. Yikes. I gotta clean my guitar. That's another lesson. All right. So the uh, we want to be able to strike. We don't want to be doing this. All right. We're, we're just going over the tip of the, the tip of the pick and the flat. Is going right over the string. Okay, um, there are certain techniques out there that um, that might be valid to do that, um, but they're more the exception than the rule. Okay, if you want to be able to get these strings, the, I'm sorry, to get the pick over these strings in a nice fluid motion, we want less resistance because this gives this is a lot of resistance with the flat of the pick. Okay, it doesn't matter whether I've got a thin pick <clears throat> or the one I'm using here, which is a little bit thicker. You got a lot of resistance to that pick, and it's going to definitely, especially when you want to up pick, there's just a lot of this resistance here. Okay, and so we do not want to do this. So I have what I, what I call the, the twist and tilt method, okay, when I'm picking strings. Uh, the twist one is probably the more important one than even, than even the tilt, but let me talk to you about this twist. We want to take the pick. And what we want to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it when I hold it too, but let me give you an idea what I'm talking about. We, when we go over the strings like this, we actually what we want to do is we want to twist the pick in our hand. And I'll show you how to do it when I hold the pick. But just to, I want to give you the idea here so that we're going over the pick, the strings, with the edge of the pick. That would be this part. Ooh, I'm out of focus, aren't I? But see, you get the idea. The edge of the pick going going over the strings all right that's the idea if you can get if you can once you get that if you can get the edge of that pick going down and we start I, if I, if you're, this is new to you just do the down picking because the up picking is going to require something extra but down picking you want to use the edge of the pick so now how do we do this when i'm holding the pick so um so when we do this we hold we hold the pick all right um all right, so now the way I told you to hold the pick was like this. And then what I do is I I bend the thumb, okay? I bend the thumb like this, all right? And then I go back to holding, putting my pick, putting my hand over the over the, um, the strings. And then when I'm doing this left-right motion with my, with my hand, I'm still going up, down. But now with the pick twisted, it's going over... <laughs> It's going over those strings with the edge of that pick, all right? Okay, let me see if I can get a good angle here. This is really, always hard to do here. Okay. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm not here. We're not doing the flat of the pick. I bend my thumb, and I'm still going up and down. I haven't changed my 
how I'm going up and down. I haven't changed how my hand is. I just put my thumb like this. All right. And we just go straight over the strings, just like that. Okay. Now, if you just do that with the open string, instead of doing flat, I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know. I hope you can. Here, it just sounds more, more snappy. And, and like I said, there might be tech, there may be a song or technique where you actually you do want that. So it's not like you're never going to do this. But the default is that instead of this, can you hear that? I'm just changing the angle of that pick. All right. And then, all right. And by you going over the edge of that pick, I have a lot less resistance because I'm only using the edge of that pick, just the edge of it. Just going like that, all right? Edge of that pick going right over those strings, all right? All right, just like that. Now, that's the twist, man. Now, so I did say twist and tilt. What the tilt is, is um, that involves them going up, okay? This may be probably be a little more evident when I'm doing uh, up strumming with the guitar, with the acoustic or the electric too. But um, what I mean by by the, that's, that's the twist. The tilt is definitely, is the angle at which Okay, maybe that'll help. Or maybe I'll just do it this way. All right. Is the angle at which the pick is going to come down. So I still twist it. And now I want the angle to be like this when I go down. But when I go up, I turn my wrist in, in the, what is that? Counterclockwise direction. So I'm still striking the edge of that pick, although now I'm coming in from this direction here. And in order to do that, I just, Twist my arm when I'm doing up and then going back down and then up and then down, just like that. Okay. So when I'm doing single notes, all right, if this is new to you, just do the down pick. Don't, don't worry about the up pick. Just worry about the twist. You don't have to worry about the up, the up pick. All right. But I'm basically striking it coming in from the front end, but still striking the edge of that pick. And when I'm picking up, it's the other edge when I do the up. Okay, it's a little hard to do that slow. But the bottom line is I'm not hitting the flat of that pick. If you do that flat of that pick, you're going to get a lot of resistance, especially if you're strumming too. That's going to be really, really tough to do. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're doing the flat of the pick. I'm sorry, the doing the angle. So that's the twist. And then when you do down and up, you have twist and tilt. So you're just tilting the pick one way or another by just twisting your wrist. Okay, or twisting your arm or wrist and going up or down, up or down, up or down. All right. And that is really, really a key also is to be able to just strike the edge of that pick. Okay. So the goal is to strike the edge of the pick, lower edge, I should say, lower edge, as opposed to the, um, uh, the tip of the pick. Okay. So that is, uh, in essence, how we do a lot of that. Now, um, I did promise I would grab the acoustic and uh, give me like one second over here. I've got the um, got my acoustic right here and I'm going to show you how this applies to the acoustic guitar. Right. I lied. I didn't have my six string. Here it is. Okay. So um, <clears throat> now I have the six string guitar, six string acoustic. Um, and the simp this, I'm just going to uh, give you the similarities to it and then give you one extra thing on strumming, okay? So on this acoustic, again, they all look a little different, but this, again, is a bridge. Every guitar has a bridge. This is a bridge, or at least most guitars. I guess if you have a Steinberger, it's different. But most guitars have a bridge, all right? And then right here are the saddles, okay? In my case, it's, these, it's this white thing right here. So when I, if I'm picking individual notes on the acoustic, I'm doing the exact same thing I told you on the... Um, the electric still twisting and tilting still have the same arm angle okay wait i gotta back up it's bigger bigger body guitar still the same arm angle i'm using my wrist when i when i do stuff like that okay up and down up and down and i'm twisting that pick if i'm going down and i tilt it up when i'm going up okay now uh the one thing i want to show you now with the acoustic because it's, it's better to show an acoustic although you can certainly strum an electric there's no reason why you can't strum the electric you can do it on both uh, I just like the acoustic because this tends to lot lend us to wanting to strum a guitar. So when we're strumming, um, 
all all the things I showed you are in play. They're all the very they're all the similar things. Proper pick angle, you hold the pick the same. Everything is the same. However, when we're strumming the guitar, the one thing that we do want to do now is we're going to take our, we take our hand off of the bridge. Okay, you want your hand off the bridge when you're strumming. All right, so I'm just going to form a chord over here. It doesn't really matter what what chord you strum. Now, when I'm going across, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm going across with the edge of the pick. With my with my hand with my, with my hand tilted this way. Okay? Just like that. Going down. Going down. Alright, now when we're strumming, okay, now I know we might be getting a little bit away from the actual picking, but this actually plays uh, into the picking part. When we're strumming the guitar, all right, there's a tendency, a couple, couple tendencies of doing one or two things. We're we're wanting to we, we keep our arm really stiff. Or we're, we're just just doing just the wrist like I did with the picking part. We want to use a combination of the wrist and the arm. So the way I always teach it and the way I talk about it is the wrist leads the arm. When the wrist moves in this direction and it's going to move in a – can be moving in that type of direction. But the arm follows. As, as the wrist goes this way, the arm goes this way. As the wrist goes this way, the arm goes that way. Okay, try to think of it that way rather than the arm goes that way. Then I'm going to move the wrist. You want the wrist to move because the wrist has got the first point of contact here on the strings. So as the wrist moves, then the arm is going to move. And that's how we want to be able to strum the guitar. All right. Again, I'm coming at the same angle. So all these other things I talked to you about to you, they, they all apply here. All right. Arm is at the same angle. All right. As you can tell, it's a bigger body guitar. So I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to be held a little bit different. But I still want to come in at the same angle. But now when I'm strumming, I take my hand off the bridge, and I'm I, you don't have to see the chord. It can be any chord. Pick a chord. It doesn't really matter. You want to strum a chord. You see how I'm doing this? So I have the proper pick angle, and I'm just down strumming so that the pick is, is, tilted, a certain, is tilted this way. Okay? Still, pick, still, still picking this way. All right, using the edge of that pick with my with my pick twisted a little bit, and I you know and I, and I should just uh, clar clarify something. I'm not like picking like a lot. This isn't a dramatic bend of the thumb. It's a little bit. You know, you can see me right now. It's that. It's just a slight bend of that thumb so I can get that twist. All right, and I'm just I'm literally just I'm strumming off the edge right here. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And I got a lighter pick, so I got less resistance. All right. Now when I want to do my up strum. I'm going to tilt the pick by twisting my uh, wrist, well, my wrist and my arm. All right, can you see? Let's see if I can get a good angle here. See, I'm going left, right motion, but can you see? It's it's almost like like some chill musician, right? Or it's just like like a like a painting stroke or something like that. But I like to think of a conductor. You know, it's kind of like that conductor motion. You can see. But it's really subtle. It's not dramatic, unless you want to play. Like, unless you want to do stuff like that. I mean, you can certainly. Sure, sure but most of the time, we just want to strum. Using the side of the pick. Let's see if I can give you. A, see if you can hold, maybe you can get the angle right here. A closer. See, I want you to see this. Yeah, just playing an old song like moves. It's got down and up picking, and I'm I'm literally right here. It's less resistance on on my on the pick and that can flow across those strings down and up, down and up on that, um, on the strings, okay? So that, in essence, is how we wanna hold that pick, twist and tilt when we're strumming the guitar. If, as you notice, all the other rules apply on the acoustic when I'm strumming, okay? Now, if I'm picking notes on the acoustic, guess what? It's gonna be exactly, it's, it's exactly what I told you on the, on the electric, no different. <laughs> And then 
um, you know, when you start getting more advanced, like if I'm going to play, and then we're just going to get into Pink Floyd, where there's picking and strumming, right? <laughs> See what I'm doing there? I'm picking uh, the notes. I get my hand here where I'm doing the individual notes, and then I put my hand out when I wanted to strum, right? Now that's probably a little more advanced. So if you're new to this, you might want to get familiar with the mechanics first before you actually jump into the dip picking notes. But that happens a lot, especially on acoustic. See? And I'm going back and forth. And I still try to hold to those rules. Those rules, again, like I said, are always meant to be broken. <laughs> there are times you may have to pick a note when you're off the bridge. That can certainly happen. There are times you may strum and you need to have your hand actually anchor to the bridge. Those things can happen. I mean, music is very fluid. We all, there's always exceptions to every rule, but these are things uh, to get you started. This is what will get you going, okay? And so if this is something that you struggle with, um, let me get back to my other camera here real quick. So if this is something that you that you struggle with, um, these this is a great starting point, all right? And how to hold that pick um, and uh, where to place it and how to strike it over the strings. This is really, really super important uh, to improve your playing. Now, there are a lot of exercises. There are a lot of different things that we can do uh, to work with that because then you got to have the pick in coordination with the left hand, right? Like you, you noticed, I didn't even show my left hand. It was on purpose. I wanted you to see the right hand. I wanted you to see the, pit, the pick. But uh, then we got to start adding in, like, how do we coordinate the picking with our left hand, all right? Um, I, for me, scales work great for this. This is it doesn't matter the scale, ma chromatic, major, minor, pentatonic, whatever scale you're interested in. Um, these, this is these are great practicing points where you can sort of learn how to coordinate now your left hand with your right hand with the picking motion. But whenever I'm teaching anybody this, and I'm, this is what I'm telling you, especially if you're early on in this, is work on the right hand before you start diving into getting your left hand. I know we want to make the music, but if we don't get the technique right, the music's going to suck. <laughs> it just is. It's going to suck. So I try not to rush people in too quickly into just doing all the stuff. I mean, it, it's just not, not practical. We want to start slow. If you start slow and be accurate, guess what? You're going to start dynamite in no time. All right. I usually like to use the, the hare and the tortoise example, right? I mean, you know, the tortoise, tortoise wins steady as she goes right and that in essence is what will get you across whatever finish line whatever goal you're shooting for okay so um like i said there's a lot of those techniques uh that are good for i hope this this is this was good for you um if there's anything you else you need to know you want to learn more i i do want to continue this if this is something that you want to hear uh, there's a lot more exercises I can give you. We can we can tap into this next time. I think I will be on next week. Yep. And I haven't. I have agenda. It's very loose. So it, you know, if you guys are interested in something and, and you got want me to touch on something, I will definitely uh, look into that and maybe change it and cover it because this is actually for you guys, not for me. I'm, I'm here to help you guys out, become better players. Um, and in, and speaking of becoming better players. Um, I, you know, when, like I said, whenever we're warming up left hand, right hand, we want to make sure that we're warming up properly and we want to make sure that we have our coordination, dexterity, all that in order. So uh, I do have a, it's, it's a set of videos called Guitar Finger Gymnastics. You need to go to the gym, right, to get those fingers working right. There is a link below on that that will uh, definitely help you. I mean, I use the all, all everything you see on there is what I use, and I've been playing for 40 years, so that's what I'm trying to share with you guys. And it's what I teach my private students um, is that same thing is just um, uh, you know getting your strength, your coordination, stretching, whatnot uh, in order. So that's in a description below uh, regarding Facebook and YouTube. It should be down there. Guitar finger gymnastics. Uh, just click into that and and uh, check that out. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a bunch of videos 
Um, and you can just pick and choose. You don't have to go in any certain order. Find what, what you want to work with. I definitely would start the first couple of videos and then work your way on down, okay? Because I do talk about technique such as this with the pick um, and, uh, and a bunch of other things, all right? So just be sure to check that out. I think that'll help you out as well. Um, but thanks again for, for tuning in. Thanks around for sticking around. I hope this is helpful for you. Again, be sure to leave a comment if you're watching this afterwards. Thank you for, for sticking around too. I do come back and check comments regularly. So uh, if you're on YouTube or even on Facebook and you got a question or you want me to, uh, to, to get a suggestion for something or maybe there's a different technique that you think works, um, I, you, one thing as a musician, you never close your mind. So I'm always interested in hearing other stories, other methods and how people do stuff. Uh, be sure to do that. Just leave, just leave a note below. Leave a note in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. So anyway, that's it about picking 101 and 102-ish. Um, I will continue with 102 or 103 if you want. Um, I also got songs. I got a lot of live lessons coming up in the future. I have some really, really super cool cult stuff coming up in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that too. And I'll, I'll let you all know, just stick around on the YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're on YouTube, Facebook, you know, just go ahead and like the page uh, on my six stream corner site. Um, and I'll, uh, you know, you can keep up to date. Um, there's also an email list that you, you can definitely get involved with. You'll see that if you sign up for this gymnastics, you can either get into it or not. It's up to you, but uh, you'll get updates as far and, and a bunch of other tips and tricks that'll help you become better players. All right. So anyway, that's enough of my talking. I'm going up to have some dinner. So uh, thank you so much. Um, go out there and vote. It don't matter what, I don't care what aisle you are on. Go out there and vote. If you're in the United States, if this is a big time for us here in America, if you're not in America, we still love to have you around. Uh, I love uh, teaching anybody, no matter where you're from. All right. So thanks a lot. Have a great evening or day, depending on where you are in the world. And I will catch you all next week. Catch some of my YouTube videos too. I got a whole bunch of other things. If you want to catch, uh, see more on Six Stream Corner on YouTube. All right. So go check that out as well. Hey, thanks a lot for sticking around and rock on y'all.